His Holiness the Dalai Lama asked us to record your experiences so that we can share your memories with many generations of Tibetans, the Chinese, and the rest of the world. Your memories will help us to document the true history, culture, and beliefs of the Tibetan people. Do you give your permission for the Tibet Oral History Project to use this interview? Yes, of course. Thank you for sharing, offering to share your story with us. So, Your Holiness, um, maybe we could begin where at the beginning. Can you share with us some of the er, some of your earliest memories of your childhood that that you would like to share with people? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure, sure. I was born in 1945, mm -hmm. a place called Zedong, which is about uh, 20 miles from Shikaze towards Lhasa. <clears throat> and there we have our monastery and also our own uh, uh, family uh, land mm -hmm. and house. So when my parents were traveling and staying there, I was born there yeah. in a very uh, holy uh, room where a long time ago one of the earliest great master was also born in the same room. And then when I was born, of course, they said there were some good signs. And, uh, I, but of course that I don't remember. And then also after that, they have visited several uh, holy places. Uh, and then they came, after a year or two, they came to Sakya and uh, had a very elaborate celebration of uh, my first um, birthday, my birthday celebrations in mm -hmm. Sakya. Not the first birthday, but second or third or something like that. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and then um, my mother passed away when I was very young, so I, I, I don't remember her very much. But my mother's sister, my auntie, uh, she took care of us. Yeah. She was like my mother, actually more like my mother. Mm -hmm. She took care of us, she educated us and taught us everything. And especially she made the arrangements to go to the different places to receive the initiations and teachings. and. Uh, transmissions and so on. And then um, I remember my father very quite well. I received several initiations from him. And uh, also when he was in doing retreat, we used to go, I and my sister. Actually, we have, we have four. Uh, the eldest one is my sister who lives in Canada. Yes. And then the second one is another another son, but he died yeah. when he was very young. Mm -hmm. I, I I didn't see him before I was born. He already oh, passed away. And then the third one is also another daughter. She I remember quite well, but she also passed away huh. when she was quite young. And then the, I'm the youngest one, so yeah. the eldest one and the youngest yeah. one is still living. Still living, amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, the end. And then, uh, uh, so my father was in retreat and he used to give us, he's very good in making things like, uh, with, with, with the doors that he can make like small statues, uh, small yeah. masks and so on, so to, just to play for yeah. us. So mm -hmm. he used to give like this. But then my father also passed away. Uh, when I was only uh, about six, six years, six oh. years old. So, uh, so basically, it is my auntie who took care of everything. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then after that, I went to several nearby Sakya. There's another very famous monastery where I went, and a place called Ngor Monastery, Ngor Monastery. Mm -hmm. And there I went and uh, received many precious teachings. Mm -hmm. 
your holiness, from my holy guru. From your holy guru, um, do you remember how you felt about having such an important role in the in your tradition that you were meant to study and become a teacher? Do you remember as a child? Did that feel strange or? No, no. Actually, anyone who is born in our lineage will have to become a la- lama. Lama becomes. At least lamas and not the leaders, but the maybe tr- lamas. So it is kind of obviously. Okay. And then also my my auntie and my teachers and also my attendants, they always advise us to be good lama and to be educated, to, to be good discipline and to, to have a <coughs> uh, good discipline mm-hmm. and good lama. So they all constantly... Uh, telling us so therefore of course it is quite natural yes and this Ngor monastery is very important because uh, that is another uh, may, maybe uh, we don't know exactly how far it is but it's also quite near to Mshikate and there is very important because there I received the, the most important teachings in Sakya tradition, it's called Lamde. 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 You know Lamde? Yes. Lamde. And that is a, I received from a great abbot uh, called, uh, uh, he is popularly known as uh, like Thamba Dojisang. Thamba oh. Dojisang. So he was the most, my most important uh, root guru. Oh. And so, so therefore, that I, I received from him the most important teachings, and that's very important for me because I lived there almost two years. Really, yeah. And received many important teachings, and then later I received from his uh, regent, mm-hmm. from regent, also from many many, teach- many teachings. Mm-hmm. And then later, my, the, his regent came to Sakya, and gave also many teachings. Mm-hmm. I remember very well when I was about eight years old, we traveled first time to Lhasa. Oh. And that was uh, yeah. um, by horse all the way, oh. by a horse uh, all the way yeah. from Sakya to Lhasa. Yeah. And we went kind of slowly, so it took us almost fortnight. Yeah. And, uh, and there, uh, uh, after a few days of our arrival in Lhasa, His Holiness the Dalai Lama came from uh, Yatung, from, from the border, right. from Yatung. Mm-hmm. Because when the Chinese first started coming, yeah. he also came to the Yatung, up to the Yatung, right. for the Indian borders. Uh-huh. So he came back. I remember that very well. Very because he came back with a very big warm welcome and with so many, ho- so many uh, lines of... Uh, of horses. Uh, oh, very impressive. And very Beautiful. Impressive, yes, very important. Very but welcoming. What? How did he treat you? No, I was I, at that time. I was very small, I and I, I, and I, I went, went to welcome him not as as a dignitaries, mm-hmm. but among with the public, uh, among with the general, general public. public. Mm-hmm. So I mean, people don't know who am I because I was very small. <laughs> Oh. So I went there, I just went there, and among the people were, when the, there's a, hundreds and thousands of people oh. are waiting to see him. So I'm also among them. Among them. Uh-huh. Tucked, uh, tucked away. And then, and then uh, something happened and that somehow it was my karma and also the prayers and also the conditions, all three together. And that he, His Holiness Dalai Lama nominated me as uh, the throne holder at that time. Really? And it was in 1950s. Huh? And, and then we, we went back to, La, uh, come back to Satya. On the way back, we spent uh, some time to celebrate the New Year in my birthplace. I remember that oh, very well. Yeah. <coughs> and then came back to Sakya, and we had a simple ceremony because the, the Sakya Prime Minister, he made the announcement that I will be the next 
throne holder, although I was only eight or nine years old. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we had a small symbol ceremony. Mm -hmm. But the big ceremony which would not help because it needed a lot of preparations mm -hmm. and there were so many other things also. So therefore it was kind of postponed uh, for a number of years. Mm -hmm. But in between this, then again, I went to Lhasa. Mm -hmm. And the second time, I went to Lhasa from Sakya to Shigatse by horse. And then from Shigatse, uh, we went by car. Second time by car. In the two days, we reached Lhasa. And there again, also, I stayed uh, uh, for several, uh, several months. And I attended the, the Chinese, uh, the big conference, the, the preparatory uh, committee of the uh, autonomous region or something. That, that uh, I was also very small, but I represent and, and I, I went there. I remember that very remember well. Remember that. Well, good memory. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I also delivered a short speech. You did? Yes. Were you... Were you at ease, or were you nervous? Uh, yeah, I was not very nervous. Although there are many people, and there were a lot of cameras and many things, but I was not so nervous. I, because uh, because we were a very young age, that I memorized many things. Yes. And also I attended many assembly of uh, monks. Mm -hmm. So therefore, gathering of many people is kind of natural. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that makes sense. Yes. You were used to it, yes. in some ways. And then I come back, then I come back, and in 1956, I came to, when His Holiness the Dalai Lama came to India to celebrate the Buddha Jainti, 2500. Uh, Buddha Jain. uh, so, oh, Buddha, some Buddha's uh, celebrations. So he, he came to India, and I also followed him. And I came to India in 1956 and visited all the holy places of the Buddha in, uh, in India. And then uh, also I visited several uh, cities like Calcutta. And uh, then finally I went back. Mm -hmm. I went back to Tibet. Yeah. And then and then in 1959, the beginning of 1959, uh, I, I had the, 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 the official elaborate uh, enthronement ceremony. 1959. So you, how old were you at that? That I've had, I was, according to the Tibetan counting, I was about 14, maybe 13, 13. 13, yeah, okay. You remember it very well? Oh, yes, I remember that very well. It must have been wonderful. Yes. Very So special. many monks and lay people came together, and uh, we had a celebration of three days. Yeah. Mm. And, and, uh, was there anything that happened that was a surprise, or were you pretty familiar with everything that was going to happen in that ceremony? Pretty much, pretty much, yeah, pretty what, much was, was, uh, uh, what was, what was, what was going happening. On. Yeah. So you very formally were going to be. Yes, that's right. And but then, uh, unfortunately, I could not stay there for a long time. I was soon up. I think the celebration was done in February, and in April, around about April. I left because the, the, the trouble started in Lhasa. Yes. And so we have to skip. Skip. But fortunately, because Sakya is actually very close to the Indian border. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we don't know exactly because there's no markers uh, at that time. But we kind of estimated, uh, I think. Uh, uh, just from Sakya to the border, I don't think there's more, more than 60 kilometers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there's no road, so oh, yeah. by horse it I takes know. about three days. Three days. Do you remember the journey? Yes, of course. Wow. What do you remember about it? I remember 
uh, where from where we started and where we stayed every night we uh -huh. stayed for three days uh -huh. and then also um, I remember that uh, everything about, uh, everything about on this journey I remember. I remember. Was it was it difficult or was it exciting to be? Yeah, it was quite exciting. It was, it quite, was exciting. quite exciting. Yes, very exciting. You weren't you weren't in danger. You were just leaving because yes. of potential danger. Yes, yes. Coming. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Did people advise you to leave because of that potential danger from yes, the China? Some, because some of my attendants who used to go to India. Yeah. And they they advised me that as soon as when we hear there's trouble started in Lhasa. Huh? Then we should not uh, cling. We should go we immediately, should go. because otherwise, officially, the Sakya Tenzin cannot travel without the permission of the central government. Oh. So, but of course, the trouble started. There's the government. The government itself is also yeah. going to India. So that, so that we ignore everything, and then we came to, to, right. to everybody yeah, yes, was yes, leaving. Yes. Did you? Uh, did you take many people with you that were part of your? No, not many. Not only many. my family. And my auntie was with me. Uh -huh. the, my the very kind auntie yeah. the, who looked after me yeah. uh -huh. for many of me. She was with me, and my sister is with me. And your sister came. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. And then know. as just attendants, close attendants. Did Did you think you were just leaving for a short time, or did you think it would be for good? I think it will be long. I know it is going to be long. You knew it was going to be long. Uh, did you have any understanding of what the Chinese were planning at that time? Did your government and your people? There were actually some Chinese people in Sakya also long before, but then the the trouble started in Lhasa, and everyone is focusing on Lhasa, and right. they all went back to to Lhasa. Yeah. So at that time there were no Chinese, uh -huh. but we still have to be very careful because there are lots of spies. Yes. Tibetan spies, yeah. Tibetans who are working for the Chinese. So therefore, we cannot leave uh, openly to say right. that I'm going to India. Exactly. So I just said to go into pilgrimage. Pilgrimage, mm -hmm. a cover to go. And had you made, did you, you obviously had a, lo a place to go to. Did you have a monastery you were going to go to in India? Where Where were you going when no, you left? No, actually we said there's a, there's a hot spring place. Uh, right at the border. So first we said we are going there. Okay. And then later we said we are going to to Sikkim. Not we we said we are not escaping, but we are going to Sikkim to receive some teachings because the one great master is living at that time in Sikkim. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Zongsai Kenzer Rinpoche oh. is living. The previous Kenzer Rinpoche, the previous yeah. Zongsai Kenzer Rinpoche, yeah. Kenzer Shugi Lord was living in Gyangto. So. Oh. We said we are going there to receive teachings. Mm -hmm. And did you go there at all? Yes. yes a we and were. did you receive the teachings? Uh, I could not. Unfortunately, I could not receive the teachings. I received teachings before because he came to Sakya also. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to receive teachings, but he was already quite ill. Oh, I see. So therefore, yeah. I couldn't receive teachings. But I met him. I you met did him. meet him. Yeah, I met him. Uh -huh. were, uh, so were people very receptive and happy to see you yes, and supportive yes, of yes, you? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. The royal family of uh, Sikkim is uh, huh. somehow uh, related to me. Oh. So they were, of course, they were all uh, they they were pleased. Married, yes. And, and and then so what happens? Do you, do you have to find a new home? What happens to you when you go? Yes, in in Sikkim, the first we rented a house. We stayed in the rented house. Uh -huh. And uh, I remember the um, the owner in the beginning was kind of a little hard because the, he wanted a high price, price. But then later he didn't charge anything. He gave us all free. And he had a very good tenant. <laughs> yeah. And then after that, uh, we came to Darjeeling. Oh. And uh, I stayed there uh, about. Uh, Four years, really? four years in Darjeeling, mm -hmm. and our first monastery was established. It was in Kum, a place called Kum near Darjeeling, mm -hmm. first monastery. 
And and the the people who joined that monastery were they coming from? Uh, Sakya, Sakya. They were coming yeah, yeah, from Sakya yes, yes. in Tibet because people yeah. people keep having monks and nuns. And the lay people keep coming, so the lay people were all sent to different settlements. For at that at that time, many yes. people went for uh, road workers and right. to make the roads. Yeah. And then the monks have no place to stay, so we we kind of hired. There was a one temple, uh, and we hired that. And later, that that temple was given to us. Yeah. So then we established that. It's called. Sakya Guru Monastery in Kum, mm. uh, and now it's, it's renovated and it looks very nice. And and I imagine people wanted to have teachings from you. No, at that time I was quite young. I I was myself mostly not giving teachings, uh-huh. but mo- mostly receiving teachings. Really? Yes, yes. And, and were you receiving them from teachers in India then? Yes, yes. Really? Yes. And Tibetan teachers or Sakya yeah. teachers? Sakya teachers. Sakya teachers who were already in India. Who came, who came. Who came. Some of them with me, some of them later. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, well, that was a big change of culture from Tibet to India. Yes. How did, <laughs> it was a big change. How did you do it? <laughs> was it easy? And also climate. Oh, climate. climate. And everything is changed. Everything was big made. Big uh, change. The air, the food. Yes. The climate. Did you? Because you went from a beautiful, cold, clear air. <laughs> but Darjeeling is a nice place. Darjeeling is a nice Dar- place. Yeah, I, I know many people it's, have. It looks gone. like England. It looks yes. like very much because I remember when we first came to Darjeeling. Darjeeling has a still very uh, English English atmosphere. Yes. Because there were. Churches. Yes. There were clubs, mm-hmm. and there were many many English people also live because many at because at, at that time it was not long time ago before the India got independent. So still there are many many of the Darjeeling tea gardens are owned by British right. families. Um, so there are many Westerners also. Many they like English the climate. They yes. Don't. Yes, they did. So that was a big change, but so gradually you kept getting more teachings of your own and maturing. Yes, yes that's all right. those years. And I, I lived in Darjeeling about four years. Four years. Ooh. And then what happens to you? Then in 1962, there was a war between China and uh, India. Yeah, yeah. In the Bumdila side, and uh, uh, there was a kind of dan- d- sense of danger. Mm-hmm. So we came, we came here. To the we, we went to Damsala actually. Ah. We went to Damsala to see His Holiness, ah. and then also we got as, uh, some advice from the uh, the officers, and there they said because we are also afraid of the heat in India yeah. and the heat, heat we could not bear the heat. Yes, if we have I to know. live in plains, it will be very hot for us. Yeah. It's not suitable for us. So we said, where is the best place to cool place? And they suggested Masuri, mm-hmm. because Masuri is cool and it's nice. So they said, you should go to Masuri. So we went to Masuri. Mm. And uh, mm-hmm. it was in January, in December or January. And people, when we reached there, the people were saying, why you go to Masuri in, in January? Masuri is so cold and <laughs> and you're and saying so good. Yeah. So we went to Masuri, and I lived in Masuri about six years. Really, that's so. The climate agreed with you. Yes, it did. Yes, six years, right? Wow. And then we established the monastery here in Rajpur in 1960s, late 60s. 64, actually, we started 64. And uh, so I keep coming sometimes. Wintertime, I come to the summertime, I stay in Masuri. I keep doing a lot of traveling. And then later, it was not uh, so convenient. And moreover, uh, we are sort of more now used with the heat. Yes. So we came down. And since, since 1971, mm-hmm. then I lived here in Rajburg. Since 1971. 
You adjust it to yes, the heat? Yes. Uh-huh. And so this has become the center. Yes. How did you find you know, the funds to build such a beautiful community here and in Purwala, yeah, Purwala, yeah, yes, yes. where we're going to go yes, yes. next? The, uh, it was all due to the blessings of uh, His Holiness the Dalai Lama, uh-huh. who was very kind. He, he gave us the blessings and the guardians and the support. And then also the government of India and the uh, the government of uh, the local government, they were all very kind to us. And then also the funds are concerned, the, the European uh, refuge campaign. Yes. yes. And they, they helped us to pay many of the things. I see. So support from many streams yes, yes. helped you to build. Yes, yes, uh, yes. That's exciting. I mean, in very... Uh, it was a very good move, <laughs> right? Because Tibet got too dangerous for you, yeah, yeah, right? That's right. Over those years. So is this where you think you're going to continue to stay? Yes, and, yes sure, sure, sure. And make, but you travel so much, too. But now you know, you know that now we have made some changes. Yes, I heard a big one recently. Yes, that's right. So now I have, given, I have re- retired. You're and retired. my position is given to the young... Uh, young uh, Kern lineage holders. Yes. Uh, the eldest one is my own son. Yes. My own, my eldest son. So, really, just very recently, yes, in I March know. 9th, we had the enthronement ceremony. Yeah. yeah, we were honored to meet you so soon afterwards <laughs> in, in retirement. <laughs> How do you like retirement? I just say the same because people <laughs> keep coming and I'm still quite busy. But hopefully, Later, yes, slow down. It, well, I'm just actually uh, making an announcement that from now onwards, that the official uh, ceremonies and official meetings and conferences and everything will be done in the name of new new Sakyatins. Wonderful. And what would you like to do with your retirement? If you have less of those regular obligations, how would you like to spend your first, day? First, very first thing is that I'm writing my own biography. Really? Which I have already done. Which I have already done. Uh, but, but it still needs a lot of uh, corrections uh-huh. and changes uh, and uh, f- to, to make final positions that I wanted to do a long time, but because of so many other things happening, that I could not finish that. Yeah. So I wanted to finish that. That yeah. is my number one project. Mm-hmm. That will help a lot of people understand the decisions you made, how your life unfolded. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, that's a very big task. Do you have someone to help you? Yes, yes. Do you have a publisher ready? Somebody? No, no, no. Not yet? Uh, Publish it not ready because it's in the Tibetan actually. It is in the Tibetan. Oh, it's going to be in Tibetan. It's in the Tibetan. Oh. But of course, once I finish in Tibetan and publish, then it's easy to easy translate. to get it once you to get it done. In, yes. That's going to. That doesn't sound like an easy retirement, right? <laughs> <laughs> but actually, I have already general uh, general drafting is finished. It's already finished. But I still need a lot of changes uh-huh. because in the, because I wrote in a hurriedly. Right. So therefore, there are a lot of holes and yeah. a lot of things need yeah. to be added. Some needs to be subtracted and uh-huh. some needs to be added. Got it. Like. You're going to be a hard editor on yourself. Yeah. <laughs> do you, what, what do you think would be the importance of writing a book for you? What, what do you want to make sure uh, that that book will do, that autobiography? Uh, as, as a lama, as, yeah. as a head, uh-huh. uh, that uh, it is important to, to write, I feel, so that people will know how to be, how the lama's life started <gasps> and studied and continued and uh, right up to now. I see how their lives evolved. Because this is an ancient tradition. Yes. In your opinion, do you think the tradition will continue for many centuries to come? Hopefully, yes, hopefully. Hopefully, yes. yes. That will be really wonderful then to have a book yes. and to have this, have this uh, a videotape yes, yes, of, yes. of you. Um, are there, are there uh, things that you feel the Sakya tradition has to offer to the world, the bigger world, not just your followers, that you think are is important today. What what teachings from the from the heart of the Sakya tradition 
are important for the world? I think the Buddhist teaching is very important, relevant in this modern time because, uh, I mean, generally I believe all the religions, all the world major religions are important mm -hmm. for different reasons, for different people. Just like we need many me different medicines for different uh, disease, one, one medicine does not cure every disease. So each disease you need a different medicine. So therefore the variety of uh, spiritual uh, practice is necessary to a variety of the peoples. Yeah. But the Buddhist teaching is very relevant in this modern age because it, uh, it is not just B B Buddha's teaching itself says that you should, you should not just go by faith alone. Right. There are two types of people. The, those who are less wise should go by faith, but those who are more wise, they should go with the logical reasons. Right. And that is very scientific. Yes. Because science also examine and they investigate mm -hmm. and then go. So the Buddhism also goes in this line. Yes. So therefore, it is very, uh, it is very kind of suitable mm -hmm. to go along with the science. Yes. So therefore, I think the Buddhist teaching is very important mm -hmm. uh, today in today's mm -hmm. world. And also the Sakya teachings. Although all the Tibetan Buddhist schools are the same, mm -hmm. there's no difference. Mm -hmm. uh, but each has its own kind of uh, special characters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, some schools emphasize more on meditation. Yes. Some schools emphasize more on the study. Mm -hmm. Some schools emphasize more on, on things, but our schools emphasize equally laid on study as well as meditation, meditation. together. So that is like, that is like more yeah. special kind of characteristic. Yes. Yes. And that with that, I can, we can make some contributions to the wider, uh, uh, how should I say, audience or the yes. wider people. The world, yes. Yes, I think you're right that there is a scientific curiosity these days yes. about the mind. Yes, How yes, does yes. the mind work? And yeah, the Buddha yeah. said, yes, let's study the mind. Yes, let's yes. look at your mind, yes. how everything changes, everything is unsatisfactory, <laughs> <laughs> and everything is different <laughs> than you think it is. Uh, so this is wonderful. So you have a wonderful retirement planned yes. to write your book. And will you te continue to teach sometimes? Yes, I will continue to teach. You to teach. The administration part and uh, the special duties to attend the conferences and ceremonies, that we part, I will retire. But teaching, I will still do. I will oh, still oh, that's, teach. that's beautiful. And will you still travel around the world, do yes, you think? Yes, I will. Okay. As long as I'm fit, that I will be. Yeah. As long as you're fit. Uh, well, I, I hope that you stay fit for a long, long, long time. <laughs> because the world needs good teachers. Many good teachers like you. Is there anything else that you would like to add? I, I'm so grateful for the time you've given us. Yes. But I want to be respectful of your, of your retirement. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes, I wanted to say people to the people that uh, uh, we all are same human beings. All our needs our difficulties and everyone everything is needed and everyone is longing for happiness whether you are buddhist or non-buddhist or whether, whether you are believer or non-believers everyone is longing for to accomplish the happiness yes. yeah. everyone is busy to find <laughs> the happiness and uh, happiness could not find through wealth or through power Mm -hmm. or through uh, force and anything like that. But happiness you have to find through uh, training your own mind. Right. When your mind is trained with the love and compassion and tolerance and to everyone, then you will find the happiness. Yes. Not any other ways. If your mind is uh, controlled with the negative emotions, there's no way to find the happiness. Yes. So the only way to find the happiness is that your mind, the mind qualities like loving kindness, compassion, and uh, forgiveness and tolerance, 
these have to be practiced as it is given in the teaching. Mm. And then one can make one's life uh, uh, purposeful. Mm. And that means yourself will be happy mm -hmm. and also you will be, be able to benefit your surroundings. Yes. That's a very good recipe okay, for good. happiness. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That's beautiful.